Okay guys, welcome to the first video in Outcome R10 right over there. Take a look. See, it's written right there. Outcome R10, we're going to deal with geometric sequences and series. Let's get started right now. Okay, so welcome to lesson 1.3. Uh, and we'll start off by considering this sequence right here that I'm circling, 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Now there is a pattern to this sequence, but it's different than the arithmetic ones we've seen before. We can see that the difference between terms uh, is not constant. Okay, That's very important for us, that the difference is not constant. And that matters a lot. That, that Therefore, we can say that this is not arithmetic. It's not arithmetic. That's too bad. But there is a pattern, so we want to talk about that pattern. There is something that relates successive terms. In fact, there's something called a common ratio. Common ratio between consecutive terms. Aha! And that common ratio seems to remain constant. In fact, we'll write R for the common ratio. If we look at term 2 divided by term 1, it's 2 divided by 1, and that gives us 2. If we look at finding R by taking term 3 divided by term 2, that's also 2. If we wanted to calculate R by taking, say, term 5, 16, divided by term 4, 8, we also get 2 and so on and so forth. So what are we finding here? Is that each term is the pre previous term times two. Okay, so we can define this idea here. And we say that this is a geometric sequence. Okay, a geometric sequence is a sequence with, well, you guessed it, a common ratio. And that common ratio is denoted as R between consecutive terms. Now, we can use geometric sequences for lots of things. So, geometric sequences are useful for making predictions about quantities that grow and decay exponentially, such as populations, bacteria, compound interest, uranium and much, much, much more. It's surprising how many different applications there are. Okay, so let's take a look at these, this example here, and I want you to try and answer this one just based on, on what you know about different sequences, like arithmetic and geometric, and, and see what category these things fall into. So this example says, are these sequences arithmetic, geometric, or neither? And if they are a sequence, what is the common difference or ratio? So if they're arithmetic, what's the common difference? And if it's geometric, what's the common ratio? I'm going to pause the video now and you try to answer for all six questions below. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to guess now. So I've shifted up to look at these six. Here we go. Uh, the ones that are arithmetic will grow by the same amount. Question A is arithmetic, okay? It is actually going up by a common difference. Hmm, how much is it going up by? It's going up by 21. So you add 21 to negative 8, you get 13, and you add another 21, you get 34. Okay, so that one we could say is an arithmetic sequence, okay? For none of the other ones do we have an arithmetic. This is the only arithmetic sequence. Okay. Now, what about the other ones? Well, let's see. Question B. This one's geometric. Okay. It's geometric. And so, for the geometric sequence, we have to check to see, is, it being, is each term being multiplied by the same common ratio? In fact, it is. If you take 15 divided by negative 3, 15 over negative 3, you get negative 5. And in fact, if you take 15 times negative 5, you'll get negative 75. And times negative 5, well, you get positive 375, and so on and so forth. This is a geometric sequence with a common ratio of negative 5. 
Okay, let's see. What else is geometric here? Oh, D is also geometric. D is geometric. It might be surprising that it's geometric. But just take a look at it. What would I multiply 1 half by to get 1 sixth? Hmm. Well, a little bit of fancy footwork and you'll discover that's actually a third. Okay. And in fact, if I multiply 1 sixth by a third, I get 1 18th. And by another third, I get 1 54th, etc., etc. And so, in fact, I could say that 1 third is my common ratio. And this is, again, a geometric sequence. Are there other geometric sequences here? Well, you might be surprised to discover that E is geometric. How can that be? Well, what am I multiplying by from, to get from term 1 to term 2? Well, let's see. The ratio between term 1 and term 2, take term 2 divided by term 1, gets me negative 1. And in fact, if you look carefully at this sequence, I multiply by negative 1 every time. 2 times negative 1 gives me negative 2. Times negative 1 gives me positive 2. Times negative 1 gives me negative 2. And so on and so forth. So in fact, this is a geometric sequence. Is there another one? Yeah, there's one more. F is a geometric sequence. I'm multiplying every term by B to get the next term. In fact, the next term in the sequence, if you thought about it, would be a b cubed and then a b to the power of four and then a b to the power of five and so on and so forth the common ratio is b so all these ones that i've circled in red are geometric our last one though over here is neither it is neither arithmetic nor geometric it doesn't have a common difference so it's not arithmetic and it doesn't have a common ratio, so it's not geometric. And you may recognize this. These are a series of perfect cubes. Hmm. Anyway, let's continue on. To find any term Tn in a geometric sequence, we can use the general term, also known as the nth term. How do we find the nth term? Well, we start with term 1, and we multiply term 1 by a common ratio. And then we multiply by a common ratio again, and again, and again, over and over again. How many common ratios do we need to multiply by to get the nth term? n minus 1 common ratios. Think about it. To get the third term... You take the first term and you multiply by the common ratio twice. To get the fifth term, you take the first term and you multiply it by the common ratio four times. You will have n minus 1 common ratios between t1 and tn. Okay, uh, so let's fill in the blanks over here. Okay. tn is the value of the nth term. T1 is the value of the first term. R, well, again, this is our common ratio. And N is the term number. Okay, let's scan down and take a look at the next example. Given the sequence 2, 4, 8, 16, I want to find the nth term and the tenth term. Okay. So the nth term can be given by the formula Tn equals T1 times R to the power of N minus 1. So T1 is over here. That's 2. And what's R? Well, a quick calculation will tell me that r is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. 
or we could have said r is 8 divided by 4 or 16 divided by 8. And what we're saying is that we take the first term and multiply it by 2 to get the next term, and multiply by 2 to get the next term, and so on. So in general, if you wanted to find the nth term, you take t1, which is 2, times the common ratio 2 to the power of n minus 1. We could actually simplify this expression, and we get t1 equals 2 to the power of n. That is the nth term. Now if we wanted to, in part b, find the tenth term, we just simply sub substitute for 10 in our formula, and we get that the tenth term is 2 to the power of 10. That's a really big number. That's in fact 1024. Notice with geometric sequences, if r is greater than 1, you'll actually end up with really large terms very quickly. Okay, on the final page of this section, there are two more questions dealing with the previous sequence. I'd like you to pause the video now and try them, and I'll have the solutions in one moment. Okay, welcome back. Uh, for this one here, the 21st term, we just simply plug the formula that we established before. T21 is 2 to the power 21, and that's 2,097,152. What about D? Well, D, we've said that the term value is 4,096, and we're asking what is the N? What, what number of term is this? Well, right now in grade 11, you don't actually have a method for solving this other than guessing and checking. And in fact, if you guessed n equals 12, you're right. 2 to the power of 12 happens to be 4,096. In grade 12, we'll develop a much better, cleaner method for finding that value. All right, for our next problem here, a uh, particular bacterial population doubles every 12 hours. The population begins at 5 bacteria, then grows to 10, right, doubles. Then it doubles again to 20 and to 40 and so on every half day. Okay, so every 12 hours. And we're asked to write a formula for the number of bacteria in terms of how many days have passed. Well, okay, let's just write down the sequence again. Uh, it's as follows. 5, 10, 20... 40, 80, and so on, right? And uh, we have a term number for each of these, right? This would be term 1 over here, and term 2, and term 3, and term 4, and term 5, etc. So if we wanted to write a formula in terms of just the term number, well, we have a way of writing that. We've already seen that. Then that would be the term number TN, is 5 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. Okay, that's just the formula. Tn equals T1 times r to the power of n minus 1. There's nothing special there. So what does n mean? n is just the number of the term. n is the term number. But when we talk as people, we don't talk about term numbers. We talk about how many days have passed or how many half days have passed. So let's think about this a little bit more. I'm going to switch colors because this is so exciting. Term 1 is after 0 days have passed. Term 2 is after 1 half day has passed. Term 3 is after 1 day. Term 4 is after 1 and a half and term 5 is after 2 days. So what if we wanted to rewrite an expression for Tn, but considering the number of days that have passed? Well, then you would say Tn is equal to 5 times 2 to the power of 2n. Now, this might take a little bit of, of some time here to believe me that this is true. Okay, so let's think about this. First off, I'm going to note n is the number of days. Now let's just kind of think about it a little bit. After one day, n is 1, 2n would be 2. 
In other words, we would have doubled twice. And in fact, that's true. That's right here. We've doubled twice by this point. After two days, n would be 2. And we would have doubled times 2 to the power of 2 times 2. That's 2 to the power of 4. 4, we'd have 4 doublings. And again, that's true right here. This 80, after 2 days, we've had 1, 2, 3, 4 doublings. Okay, so this expression here is an expression for the population in terms of the number of days that have passed. Let's take a look at our final example for this lesson. The second term of a geometric sequence is 28, and T5, the fifth term, is 1792. Find the generating function for the sequence. And so roughly what this is, we have a first term that's unknown, a second term that's 28, third term that's unknown, fourth term that's unknown, fifth term that's 1792. Let's just see if we can kind of talk through the pattern. Well, to get through a geometric se sequence, what I would do is I'd go from 28 to the next one by multiplying by r, whatever that is. To get to the next term, I'd multiply by r. And to get to this next one, I'd multiply by r. Well, whatever r is. Hey, look, that means 28 times r three times over, or r cubed, gives me 1792. So, dividing by 28 on both sides, we get some kind of number. I guess I need a calculator for that. 17, 92, divided by 28 is 64. Cube rooting both sides of this equation now gives me r equals 4. Well, what does that mean? That means I multiply by 4 every time to get the next term. We can check that this is true. 28 times 4 is 112. 112 times 4, 448. I'm doing this in a calculator, by the way. And 448 times 4, hey, 1792. It worked. What was the first term? Well, I also took the first term and multiplied by 4 to get to 28. So the first term must be 28 divided by 4, or 7. Now, what's the generating function? That's just the formula Tn equals T1 times r to the n minus 1. And so term n is given by 7 times 4 to the power of n minus 1. This formula that I've just circled will give us the entire sequence. We call it the generating function. Thanks for listening. I hope you had fun. I did too.